Hey there, it's Josh. Welcome back to Let's Game It Out. We're checking out Project Hospital today, where we get to build and manage a hospital like a total psychopath. The developers have trusted me with a key for their hospital services DLC, which we'll go ahead and see if we can incorporate into our brand new horrible hospital. Let's start by going to Sandbox. Look at all these beautiful pre-built hospitals, all built with beautiful, loving care. That's why we're going with the empty field, so we can have full control over everything that goes wrong. Free building on. Unlock all departments on. Patients can die. Quad on. And and I think we're ready to go. So here we are in our big, beautiful future cemetery. Down here, we have a list of all the departments we can build, including emergency, radiology, and so much more. New in the DLC is this administrative department, which gives us fun new things like a pharmacy, a gift shop, and my favorite, a cafeteria. And the DLC also gives us this beautiful gem, a pathology department. More importantly, an autopsy room. You know, where the real fun begins. So in order for this to all work, I want to have a lot of patients coming into our hospital. Oh, and before before we get going, I would like to draw your attention to an option I just found. If you scroll down in this crazy amount of options, I noticed this. Increase employee limit to 600. Fast PC needed. Or just disable the employee limit altogether. Very fast PC needed. Well, let's just click on both and see how this goes. I mean, I have a good PC. Maybe not a great PC. So what can possibly go wrong? So we're going to have to try to hire that many people, which is definitely going to reshape how we build our hospital. So normally the way hiring works is you would build out your little doctor's office, and then the game's going to be like, well, now you need to hire some people. Then you click the little button. If you're lucky, it gives you a beautiful list of barely qualified candidates. And then the game's like, cool, you hired some people. And as far as I can tell, the amount of people you can hire is pretty much based on if they have a desk. So we would actually have an on-call room, which based on this prefab here, you can already see the piles of desks, which translates into a whole bunch more people we can hire. See, there we go. Lots of activity, lots of playing solitaire and looking at YouTube. Now that all being said, this room is a prefab. Just look at all that wasted space. Who needs books and charts and clocks and stuff. I'm not hiring you to learn or be good at your job. These two have the right idea. Sit there and blankly stare. So we're gonna get rid of all this and design our own space. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna need to build a stunning entrance to our hospital, which for the moment I'm gonna shove in the middle of this field. Oh, you know what? Let's even look legit with these stunning brick walls. We'll just slap these doors on the front. And just so people know they're going the right way, let's make a path to the street. In fact, it turns out we can extend a little bit into the street. Give it this line of rope fences like it's some kind of carnival ride, which is gonna go all the way around. Can't have people entering the improper way. Okay, and there we go. Now you have to walk into traffic to get in there. Meanwhile, back in the building, we're gonna do something a little special. Now you might be wondering, Josh, that's too small to be a working functional hospital. And that's true, but it just leads to an elevator. But while people wait, let's see, are there any like activities they can have in here? Ooh, like a sofa? Let's go ahead and have that face in the door. <laughs> yeah, that's what you wanna see when you're getting into the hospital. People staring at you. Ooh, and fresh fruit? You shouldn't have. I think this is supposed to be for the cafeteria or the gift shop or something, but it's not my fault that we can just put this stuff anywhere. And that's why you're gonna get these lovely magazines, too. See, this is really shaping up nice, isn't it? Okay, that seems just great. So up here on the second floor is where the real fun begins. Actually, we're just gonna keep adding floors all the way until we can't anymore, which in this case appears to be six floors. Now, starting on the sixth floor, we're gonna do something special, which is we're gonna extend our foundation all the way to the edge and all the way to the other edge. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! I like how if you go back down to the ground floor, you can see no trace of that sixth floor flying high in the sky. Oh, but it's there, believe you me. And based on what I'm seeing here, I'm pretty sure it's hovering over the street, too. Can you imagine how scary this must look? One tiny little room supporting all this. Anyway, the reason we're starting with the sixth floor, we're gonna designate this whole thing an on-call room. Welcome to the on-call room, or floor, whatever you wanna call it. Now, unlike the prefab we used as a demonstration, this one appears to be missing equipment and stuff. Staff. And here's the equipment it needs. Stuff in tan is a must-have. The stuff in yellow is a would-be-nice. And everything else is if we're feeling extra spendy. Okay, so let's start in the very corner here. Put down a desk and a PC, crappy stool, and a paper holder. Oh, I guess that did it. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and keep adding them. This can't possibly take that long, right? Okay, and here we are. Took a little longer than expected, but we got all the desks to fit. Just imagine, all these desks are being held up by this. Oh, and in case you were wondering, I did count. This is over 2,800 desks. Well beyond that 600 employee limit. Okay, next step is to hire everybody. Oh, God. You know, I think I forgot about this part where I'm gonna have to go table by table and hire people. And the game is not running what I would call smoothly. Well, here we go. Wish me luck. 
Well, that took longer than expected, but every desk has a person, and as you can see, my computer's handling it really, really well. So this congestion should actually clear up in a little bit. We now have over 4,900 people out of infinity on staff. I just finished hiring everybody, which means all the night crew doctors show up too and are slowly making their way to the elevator to get out of here. Let's see if things get any better once like a thousand people are out of here. Okay, it's been about 45 minutes. People are still filing out. Oh my god, can you people hurry it up? Oh my god, just move, go home. Okay, Project Hospital, you win. I brought it down to 552 total people, and now the game is finally running at all, which means we've curbed the slideshow for now. I've also set it up so there's one stool for each two computers, which as you can see just results in them sitting on each other's laps. It's story time while they play solitaire. I also don't quite know why. There's a couple doctors here who have decided they're just gonna air type. I also have a couple here where I forgot to give them stools. Can you imagine sitting across from these people? I mean, you're just over here trying to reenact the pottery scene from Ghost. Then you have have this person just staring at you. Meanwhile, down here, these people are the nurses, which is why if you keep going, they have all their supplies like meal trays and stretchers. Hopefully that stuff is a real pain in the ass to get out of here. Also, to get the game to run a little bit better, I had to pull out all those other tables. And while that would obviously be really convenient for them, if we just gave them a nice clear path to the elevator, we're not gonna do that. That's what these lovely walls are for. Okay, let's just go ahead and make a maze. Well, less of a maze, more like a sadness spiral. Okay, yeah, there we go. Nice and efficient. That doesn't hurt the eyes at all. Especially you poor suckers with the stretcher. Oh my god, they can run-ish? I mean, can't say I blame her. There's no bathroom on this floor. Also, I don't know exactly how long it takes to get through this, but I'm gonna say it's quite a while. Okay, now that we've got that all squared away, let's build the rest of our hospital. We're gonna start building here on lovely floor two. I really want to experiment with this autopsy stuff, but in order to do that, we gotta build a real hospital. Actually, you know what? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, let's build something around the elevator, specifically a lovely gift shop. Look at all the fun stuff I can have. Balloons and flowers and t-shirts and magazines or the less desirables like open things of fruit juice. So let's make sure there's some nice fresh fruit waiting for you and also some delightful flowers. Maybe some t-shirt racks. Can you imagine if this is what you saw? Get off the elevator because you're sick only to see sweet merch. And to top it off, let's put some of these tables down where we're going to put some complimentary beverages. That's what you want at the hospital, right? A variety of stand water and fruit juices. And you just know this water is never getting switched out. It could have been there for weeks, you don't know. I think the whole point of this is that people can get this stuff for their loved ones who are in the hospital, which is a nice thought. I don't know if anyone's gonna live that long. Oh, and let's also put a wall around this so that once you're in here, you have to peruse before leaving. And the only way out is through this restricted area door, which maybe they'll figure out, maybe they won't. Okay, now it's time to build out our emergency department. For that, we're gonna need to build a waiting room and a doctor's office. As part of this, we're also gonna have to build an observation observation room in a trauma center. So first, let's start with the doctor's offices. We're gonna do a bunch of them so we can serve a bunch of people and we'll put our waiting room right here. Over here in the exam rooms, we're gonna have the exam tables face the waiting room. We wanna make sure everybody gets a nice front row seat to someone else's examination. As a reminder, there's no walls here. All these rooms are just completely open to each other. Okay, great. Now let's build out the observation room. Let's go ahead and put this on the other side of the waiting room. That half will be observation. This other half will be trauma center. Let's make sure to flip the these chairs around so people can stare at this too. Put these all closer so they can be in the splash zone. Okay, for observation, let's see just how many beds we can shove in here. And there we go. Perfect and roomy. Don't worry, trauma. We haven't forgotten about you. You and your comfortable operating tables. And there we go. Trauma me bananas. Now that we've got our basic emergency room down, let's also add some toilets so people have to crap in public. Okay, there we go. Oh, and before we open, I learned one other thing. So we can add our own ambulances. Ooh, and ambulance parking. Okay. Okay, let's see, where can I put this? Can I just put it, wait, really? I can just have it crossing our entryway? Oh my god. You sure can. Welp, good luck, everyone. And let's see, let's just take our ambulances and <laughs> I guess this is where their parking locations will be. <laughs> okay, well, make good use of those parking spaces. Now, remember the official layout and don't screw it up. Oh, and it turns out we can reposition our ambulance unloading zone. It's normally just right over here. Let's see, can I put this in the crosswalk? Oh, good. Wait, I can just keep going? Yep, that's my ambulance drop-off spot. Sorry, cross traffic. This space belongs to the ambulances now. Now, 
we're ready to open. Well, this is going about as intended. This woman in the waiting room just gets to watch this examination happen. Try not to make eye contact as she gets redressed and then undressed again for some reason. What's the hands icon for? Oh, don't worry. There's more people here to watch. God, this is so weird. And now the doctor sits back down and there's like this awkward moment where everyone's just looking at each other. Doctor, please tell me you're not asking her out to dinner. Can we make this less creepy? And also, why don't you have any hands? This is all bad. This is definitely the hospital to come to if you want to view something very specific. But it's not all about the greatest show on Earth. We can also actually click these people. And boy, does it give us a lot of information. Like what the possible diagnosis might be. The symptoms we know so far. The symptoms we're still trying to figure out. Examinations we can try. And of course, my favorite, available treatments. Now, right now, this is all being controlled by the doctor on staff. But we can click this little button here. And now it becomes an us problem. Which means now I'm going to recommend we send him to trauma care. So go ahead and put your shirt back on and just go ahead and walk yourself all the way over to whatever bed you feel like. Ah, a wise choice. I see you would like to be studied. So at this point, he's waiting for me to do something, which is why I'm gonna do nothing. I want to see if he'll just lay here until he dies. And since you two are giving each other the flirty eyes, I'm just gonna bypass you seeing the doctor. I'm gonna recommend you also go into trauma. In fact, how would all of you like to be in the trauma unit? I'm looking at you in the back there. Okay, and there we go. Ah, true love. Okay, so far, so good. This feels really normal, right? And not like an alien abduction. Why so freaked out, buddy? Be more like this guy. Guess we gotta start filling up observation, too. I like how this person just barely gets off the elevator. And I'm already like, hold it right there. I don't need to know your seven hidden symptoms. We'll figure it out in observation land. I mean, that's probably like scary and comforting, right? Like no waiting required. Just choose a bed in hotel sadness and off you go. Hospital sleeping with a smile. Aw, oh, buddy, you got chicken pox? Well, we can't be too sure about that final diagnosis, even though it clearly says 100%. You get into observation right now. Oh, wow, he fell asleep fast. I mean, I, of course, use the term sleeping lightly. Okay, things are looking nice and swell. Every bed is filled. I like that the people in observation can actually get out of bed, wearing their delightful prison attire. Ah, delicious six-day-old fruit juice. And then back to bed. Meanwhile, all these lovely folk aren't allowed to move at all or get any sheets. So now let's play the waiting game and see if we keep him in the hospital long enough they'll just die on their own. Okay, so this has been going for a little while now. It's day 85. To my complete surprise, all these people are still here. They haven't moved. They certainly haven't been blinking. And they're still very much alive. In fact, nobody's died, like at all. Also, because I have no janitorial staff, the floors are just getting dirty everywhere. I just don't get it, though. How come nobody's dying? Okay, so here's what I think the problem is. People are coming into the emergency room. They've got all these curable symptoms. And even if I trap him in the hospital, he's never gonna die of that. And I think that's kind of the problem with the emergency department. What I think we need is to add in a department that handles more serious cases. Oh, like cardiology. We'll just put our offices right over here. Waiting room right here. Diagnostic unit there. Regular ward over yonder. And high dependency. And there we go. What luxury. Now we just have to wait for people to roll in with debilitating heart problems. And we should be good to go. Okay, let's see. We got our first contender. 100% chance of pulmonary embolism. Well, that sounds great already. Go ahead and shuffle your way over to a bed. See, everyone that comes in here looks a lot more bothered. Hmm, dizziness and fever. I got this one, fellas. This calls for hospitalization. And off you go. Nap time is now. Uh-oh. Peter Hall, or as the game calls him, favorite patient. And they're collapsing. Okay, Peter Hall, I think you're swell and stuff, but I don't know if I'd call you my favorite patient. Your staff will do their best to keep them alive. Well, don't try too hard. Ah, oh, see, now we're talking. She didn't even make it to a bed. Oh, Peter died. Well, we all knew he couldn't hold on forever. Okay, Peter, let's go ahead and get you over to the morgue. Oh, no, favorite patient. Where are you going, buddy? Oh, yeah, I guess I don't have a morgue, do I? <laughs> wow, that guy took his bed instantly. Didn't even change the sheets or anything. I guess I should really build out the morgue before more people die. We're gonna build that down here on the ground floor. So we're gonna need an autopsy room and a cold room. Can I put the autopsy room through the ambulance path? Well, I guess that works. And we'll put the cold room on the other side. After all, body fridges are the first thing you want to see when you're walking up to a hospital, right? More tables right here. Plenty of autopsy tables on the other side. Okay, perfect. Plenty of autopsy tables. Plenty of cold space. You know, it really could use a splash of color, though. Oh, I know. Let's put out some of these donuts. Yeah, let's just put those right there. Ooh, and some tasty sandwiches. That's more like it. Anyway, let's head back into our hospital. See how everybody's doing. Yep, seems like business as usual. I like how this 
patient just walks by like, oh, that's too bad. Oh, well, gotta take a dump. I don't know why the game insists on calling them my favorite patients. I mean, I'm sure she's awesome. I'm just saying I think favorite patient might be a little far. Okay, now she's my favorite patient. I always liked you, Linda. Well, at least she's not fading out of existence this time. Hey, do you guys want to, like, cover her up? Oh, I guess they're a little busy right now. That's cool. Yeah, just leave this dead body hanging out with everyone else. Linda's status now is dead, transported to morgue. Uh, I beg to differ. She is very much not in the morgue. I love that this resuscitation process over here has been going on for like a day. That's what I call dedication. Oh, see, now things are going according to plan. This poor fellow seems to have gone his own way, with the game also thinking he's been transported to the morgue. Linda's body's still here, so there's kind of a cue. Oh, we got some more deaths here. You can pretty much tell who's dead if they're over their sheets, which has got to be real uncomfortable for this lady. Or you could just pass out and join the fun like this woman did. See, that's dedication. Try to save this woman's life while using this other person's face for leverage. Hey, buddy, I don't want to tell you how it is, but you might be waiting a little while. None of the doctors appear to be at their post right now. Couldn't tell you why. I guess it's just that kind of day. Oh, that poor woman finally got picked up. Were they just waiting for a stretcher all that time? What's taking you so long up here? Are you all racing for pink slips or what? Don't worry, you two. That means it's just like five more days before a stretcher shows up. Oh my god, is someone actually being delivered to the morgue? Oh no, they're just taking a shortcut. Oh my god, how screwed up is that? Psych you out with the morgue on your way to the ambulance? Oh, good news. Speaking of ambulances, this is still a valid thoroughfare. I salute you, sir, as you hit all these pedestrians. God, what a madhouse this is. I love when the ambulances show up and they're just like, out of the way, citizen. This is where we park. And then they take this injured person on a nice little stroll through the autopsy room. Oh my god, dead patient has been transferred to pathology. It finally happened. You can send the body to funeral services or perform an autopsy to learn what went wrong. Well, I think we know what we're gonna do. Your body belongs to science now. I can't believe how well this is going. Everyone's finally coming home, <laughs> including this ambulance. Yeah, just put yourself in position. Perfect. Okay, cool. Great. Thanks, guys. Okay, I feel at this point like everything's going according to plan. Just a world of people passing out everywhere. Most people in cardiology are dead. It's a good time over here. Speaking of good times, look how beautiful our morgue is looking. So much so that we've been expanding. I can't really explain why there's blood everywhere. Like a lot of blood. As before, we don't have any custodial services and it is day 138. So, you know, blood just kind of happens. So I think it's finally time. Let's autopsy it up. You know, I'm so excited to do our first autopsy. Let's make it real special. Let's make a day out of it. So let's get rid of all these extra tables. Slim it down to just the one. You know, you could have fooled me that there was no autopsies happening here. This looks like this has been a kill floor for years. Anyway, let's add some extra lights. Mm-hmm. And now let's add some refreshments, as well as some of those tasty sandwiches everybody loves. Not to mention some donuts. Add in some proper seating. Okay, now we've got ourselves a good old-fashioned prison autopsy. Okay, let's pick our first person completely at random. Come on, Michael. Let's go. Here's our doctor scrubbing in, and now she's just staring at the paper towel holder. Is this like the medical version of shadow boxing? She's just like mentally psyching herself up for the big autopsy. Oh boy, I do believe it's showtime. There he is. What a festive day this is for all. Everyone just grabbing sandwiches and drinks. They're all here to see you. The doctor's like, yep, let's get this over with. <laughs> this woman's just like, uh-huh. Huh, you know what I just realized? This is literally the only time I've seen anyone's eyes closed. All it took was being dead on a table for like four months and then finally having an autopsy done. And now that she's done, let's give it a big finish. Here to turn you into human jelly, it's the ambulance! Well, that was fun. At this point, I think there's only one thing left to do, and that's check in on our favorite lovebirds. That's right, 139 days later, they're still here. You know what? I think it's time we give them the wedding ceremony they always deserved. Clear away all this stuff, and let's go ahead and give you two a little privacy. Kinda. And now these two lovebirds can live out the rest of their days in holy matrimony. I mean, at least for a couple of minutes before the air runs out. So I hope you had fun. I know I did. And just like with this guy who's now a centerpiece because no one picked him up after the autopsy, I'll see you next time.